Okay, welcome back to our discussion. Today, now we will learn the principles of binomial theorem. So, binomial theorem is simply a binomial. Say, this will be my binomial. A plus B raised to the power of N. So, this is A plus B raised to the power of N is a binomial raised to a certain power. So, if you are going to expand this in terms of sigma notation, this is sigma notation or the summation, okay? this is just the summation of NCR. If you are, if you can recall now what is NCR, okay? this is a combination, but in this case, instead of R, I will be using K because I will be using from k equal 0 up to the value of n. So this is nck multiplied by a raised to n minus k multiplied by b raised to k. So this is the formula. But I don't want you to remember. Don't remember this formula. So I, I am just writing this just for uh, demonstration. Okay. Let's say I have here um, a plus b raised to 0. So what will happen to the value here? So a plus b raised to 0 is simply equal to 1. right? If this is a plus b raised to value of 1, this is just a plus b. In short, if this is a plus c, uh, not c, but b raised to the power of 2, this is just a squared plus 2kb plus b squared. Take note. Okay? Take note. This is the middle term. Okay? If this is the power of 2, so the middle term will have half of the total power. Of the exponent. Okay? So if this is a plus b cube, this is now a cube plus 3a squared. Notice the uh, reduction of the powers of a. a plus 3a and then the powers of b is now increasing. This will now become so this is the basic principle. So this is the basic principle of uh, binomial theorem. This is the basic principle of a binomial theorem. Now I want to uh, insert something here. Okay, let me move my mouse. Let's go back to again. Okay, now I will be moving this up to the left okay, because I will be using some parts uh, on the right. Okay. Now, now take note of this. This, this will be the expansion. If you expand okay, a binomial, this will be the result. Now, if we will take, uh, if we will just take um, the coefficient, so let's say for uh, the powers of zero, we have the coefficient of one. A and B will have the coefficient of one and one. A squared plus two AB plus B squared will have the power of 1, 2, 1. So definitely, if you will notice, this forms a Pascal triangle. So we have here 1, 3, 3, 1. So this is actually our Pascal triangle. Okay, this is very important, especially in dealing with binomials. And that is the Pascal triangle. I will erase some parts of this because I will be um, discussing some more of it. So 
Let's go back. Let's go to the next page. Now, notice that the number of terms, okay, number of terms, these are very important. Facts about linear theory. So the number of terms is simply, okay, no, let's go back there. The number of terms is simply, like for example, this is the number of terms, 1, if n equals 0. You have two terms if n equals 1. You have three terms if n equals 2. You have four terms if n is equals to um, 3. Now, the number of terms can be defined as n, which is the exponent, plus 1. That's the number of terms. Now, we can write any term of the binomial expansion as, so any term of the binomial expansion can be found here. This is any term of the binomial expansion. That's how you take the terms in your binomial expansion. So this is just n, a, c, k, take note of that, a raised to n minus 1, and then b raised to k. Let's go back here. So that is now the binomial, like the any term of the binomial expansion. So supposing I want to solve for uh, the second term of the binomial expansion, that will work. This will be the formula that you are going to memorize. <laughs> Take note, I will not I, I will not allow you to memorize any formula in my class. Uh, later I will teach you, you know, how to solve problems without memorizing the formulas. Now let's go to the sum of coefficient. Sum of the coefficient of the binomial terms. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to solve the sum of the coefficient of the binomial? Terms. Let's go back here. For example, if I have here a binomial raised to the power of 1, the sum of the coefficient, okay, I will write here, the sum of the coefficient is equal to 2. Okay? If I have here a binomial raised to the power of 3, okay, raised to the power of 3, this is the sum of the coefficient. Sum of coefficient is 8. Okay, so definitely, if I'm going to substitute 1 and 1 to the variable, let's say I want, I want to substitute 1 and 1 here, the result will be the expansion in Pascal's triangle. For example, if I'm going to substitute 1 and 1 to this binomial expansion, the result will be 1 plus 1 raised to the power of 2, which is 8. Okay, 8 is actually the sum. As shown here, this is okay. as shown in this one, three, three, one, and sum is t. Now, to make it simpler, the sum of coefficient you know, can be solved you know, if, if we substitute, if we let a and b equal to one. For example, if I have here uh, x plus y, instead of x and y, I will be using a and b. Let's say I'm going to of a plus 2b, let's say 2b, raised to the power of 3, the sum of the coefficient, okay, sum of coefficient, okay, I will write sum of coefficient, sum of coefficient is equal to Take note, we will substitute a and b with 1. That's 1 plus 2 to the power of 3. Okay. Now, if you will simplify this, the sum will be 3 raised to 3. That will be 27. That's the sum of the coefficient. Okay. Okay, now next, uh, let's go back here. Take note of the exponent okay, of each term. The exponent of a squared is 2. Okay? The exponent of a to a b is 1. Take note of the term. So the sum of the exponent of each term now, is always equal to the value of n. So 
that's uh, the facts you know, that you need to understand in your binomial theorem. Now, we will solve this problem without, without using any formula. Let me read the problem. In the, expression, in the expansion of x minus 3y squared raised to the power of 9, we are going to find the third term. Okay? Third term. We will not, we don't need any formula. Okay? okay? This is the technique. This is the technique that I will be sharing with you to make this uh, binomial theorem easy. So let's uh, recall the expansion. Okay. The first term of the expansion, let's deal with uh, the first term first. The first term of the expansion, let's, I will be dealing with x only. Take note, I will just use the variable x. The first term of the expansion is x raised to 9, right? That's the first term of the expansion. The next term of the expansion is x raised to 8. Right? That's the second term. So the next term will be x raised to 7. So how many terms do I have? I have here the first term, the second term, and the third term. Okay? Take note of that. So meaning to say, in the third term, x will have a power of 7. Take note of that. x will have a power of 7. Meaning to say, minus 3y squared will have a power of 2, right? Since the, the sum of the exponent should be equal to 9. So you will write this as x raised to 7, okay? And then copy the next term. Of course, you have to copy that sign 3y squared, okay? And the power of this 3y squared is equal to 2. Take note. I have here 7 and 2, that is equal to the power of 9. Okay. The sum of the powers uh, of each term is equal to n. Okay. Now, how many, what is the power? The total power is 9. The power of your binomial is 9. So you can write here as 9 factorial. Okay. What's the power of x? It shows here, this is 7. So we will divide this by 7 factorial. What is the power of this term? 2. So again, we will divide this by 2 factorial. That's it. Okay. That's the third term. This is now your third term. Did we use any formula? Of course, no. Okay. Now, first, no, we will simplify this value using our calculator. So going back to our calculator, we have 9 factorial okay, divided by 9 factorial. Again, 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 9 factorial. We have 9 factorial, shift factorial, okay, divided by, we have 7 factorial, shift factorial, divided by 2 factorial. Let's okay. see. Let's simplify first the. Okay, it's error because we need to put multiplication. That's 36. This is only. This is just 36. Okay? Now, simplify. What is the power of x? x raised to 7. What is the power? Simplify this. This will become negative 3 squared, right? And then y to the fourth, right? But here, negative 3 quantity squared should be multiplied to 36. Take note of that. By inspection, you can actually see that the powers of x, the power of x is 7 and y is 4. So technically, there is no other in the traces that will have the power of this one. By inspection, just the power, the answer is letter A. But we will also uh, multiply this one with 3 minus 3 squared. 
So minus v squared is 9. I have here a nine calculator, 36. I will just multiply that by 9. So the result is 324. So I will just write it here. This is 324. Okay. X raised to 7. And then y raised to 4. This will be your final answer for this problem. Okay? It's easy. Did you memorize any formulas? Did you use any formulas? No. We just collect, we just collect the total power, which is 9, and then we take the factorial. And we just use the powers of x, the 7 factorial, and the powers of the next term, which is 2 factorial. We didn't use any formulas here. Let's try it again using this problem. Okay, but this time now we are going to find the sum of all numerical coefficients. So we, we have done this before. We since we will be using x and y here, what we will do here is to substitute the value of x and y to one, and then expand. It. So we have one minus three. So since one squared is just one, raised to the power of nine. So let's see. That's the sum of all the numerical coefficients. So we can have here as negative 2. We can have here as 1 minus 3 raised to the power of 9. Of syntax error, what happened? No, this is syntax error. This is not minus. This is minus. Okay. That is negative, negative 500. This is negative 500. Negative 500 is the sum of all numerical coefficients. Okay. Oh, okay, again, uh, we will find the coefficient of the expansion x plus y raised to 10 containing x raised to 7 and y raised to 3. Take note, this is now given. Uh, all you have to do is just write here x raised to 7, y raised to 3. What is the total exponent? Yes, that's 10 factorial. What is the exponent of x? Yes, that's 7 factorial. Exponent of y? 3 factorial. That's it. Then use your calculator. So you will have 10 factorial. It's 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial divided by, or multiply that by 3 factorial in the denominator. So that is going to be 100. So we did not use any formulas here, right? That's the technique in uh, learning binomial theorem. Again, let's try to find the middle term. So, going back now, in our discussion, in a plus b squared, we expanded this to a squared plus 2a times b plus b squared. Take note of the exponent of the middle term. The exponent of the middle term is always half, okay, half of the ex total exponent. So meaning to say, if we will expand this one and look for the middle term, the middle term will have the exponent of eight. So I mean, this is x squared, the exponent of x squared is eight, the exponent of one is eight. That's the middle term. Okay? And then what? And then half e, the total exponent, which is 16 factorial, divided by 8 factorial and 3 factorial. So whatever the exponents of the terms, no? that will be the uh, factorials in your denominator. So let's uh, simplify this one. So I have here 16 factorial. Just uh, edit this one. Okay. And let's just use 16 factorial. And that's it. Divided by 8 factorial. Divided by 8 factorial. That's 1, 8, 17. 1, 1, 2, 8, 7, 0. And x squared raised to 8 is x raised to 16. So meaning final answer would be letter A. So A will be the final answer. Take note, without using any of the 
formulas. Okay. What about this one? What about this problem? So it involves this is not a binomial but a trinomial. Okay. Actually this is not part of your binomial theorem because you will see you can see here that this is a trinomial but nevertheless we can solve this using the principles of binomial theorem. Okay, now we will look for the terms. Okay, uh, let me read the problem first. In the expansion of x squared plus y minus z cube, quantity to the power of a, we are looking for the terms that involves x raised to 10 and z raised to 6. So take note of the original power of x and z. So that is very important. You have to look at the original powers. That is x squared. So we have here x squared is the term. We also have y here. And we also have z. Okay? Z is z cube, the original power. Okay? But we need to find x is the 10. So we need to say for x uh, squared to become x raised to 10, this should be raised to the power of 5. Right? So to, for z cubed to become z raised to 6, this will be raised to the power of 2. Okay? Okay. Now, going back here, the total, the total exponent is 8. So we have here 5 and 2. That is already 7. What? So we have 1 left for the exponent of y. So this is 5, 1, and 2 exponent. So what about the factorial? It's still the same. Let's say the total power is 8. That's 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial. That's the power of x squared divided by 1 factorial. That's the power of y. And 2 factorial. That's the power of z. Simplifying it further, since this is 8 factorial, 8 factorial okay, divided by 5 factorial. Okay, we, we, don't need, we don't need to put 1 factorial. Okay, it's all. We already know that it is 1. And of course, 2 factorial is also 2. But for demonstration, I will be putting 2 factorial and 1 factorial. That's for demonstration. One factor is my one factor. Okay, one factor. That's one hundred sixty-eight. So this is now one hundred sixty-eight. One hundred sixty-eight. And x squared raised to five is x raised to ten. Y raised to one. Z raised to six. This will be a final answer. So where is Obviously, it is letter B. So that's letter B. So that is the power of, or the expansion if a trinomial is raised to the power of A. Alright, now we go to this problem. We will find you know, the term that is free of X. When we say term free of X, now that is a constant term. This means we are going to find the constant term of the expansion x uh, plus 1 over x raised to 1.5, all not raised to the power of 15. But we will be looking only for the constant term. So a constant term, okay, take note, a constant term. I have a variable in x with a power of 0, right? This is x raised to 0, this is x raised to 0, this is x raised to 0. That's, that is a constant term. Now, since we already know the power of x, which is equal to 0, now we need, I will copy this one, and also I will copy this one, uh, x raised to uh, 1.5. I'm going to uh, 
take the reset for part. No, not, not the reset for part. So I'm going to put x no, on the numerator, the exponent will become negative. Okay? We don't know the powers of x and x raised to minus 1.5. But we know the total exponent. So if this is k, the exponent, the exponent here is 15 minus k. So that if I'm going to add the exponent, the result will be 15, right? Okay, that's good. So this should be resulted to x raised to 0. Okay? Now, if we will simplify it further, this will become okay. No, we, we don't have no coefficient here. Okay. Let's just put it question mark. Since we don't know the values of k, we need to first solve for the value of k. So this will become x raised to k. Okay. Multiply that by x raised to minus 1.5 times 15 minus k equals to x raised to 0. Okay. Now, if we will take out okay, all the exponents here, okay, I will just copy all the exponents and equate it to zero. The result will be k minus 1.5 times 15 minus k equals to zero. Now we can solve for the value of k. How are we going to do that? Of course, we have to simplify. No? So let's expand. Okay, no, we, we don't have the value of k. We will first solve for k so that we don't know what are the exponents of x and x raised to minus 1.5. We need to solve value, the value of k. Now, if we, if we will multiply this term and then um, transpose that to the other side of the equation, I will be using a calculator that's 1.5 times 15, and that's 22.5, okay. 22.5, this is 22.5. Now, if I'm going to multiply this term to that term, okay, that result will be positive, positive 1.5, right? Positive 1.5k plus k, that will result in 2.58. Therefore, we can now solve for the value of k. So 22.5 divided by 2.5. That is what will be 9. So we need to say the value of k is equal to 9. So we can write this here. Okay, I will erase this part first. And I will create the value of k now is equal to 9. Okay, no, the value of k is equal to 9. So I have here x. Now, since k is equal to 9, the power of x will be 9. So also I have here 1 point, x raised to 1.5. Since the power is of x is 9, the remaining power will be 6. So that if we will add 9 and 6, the total will be Okay, now for the coefficient, no, the total power is 15 factorial. Okay, divide that by the power of x factorial and the power of that is term factorial. Okay. Now you have 15 factorial divided by uh, 9 factorial. Let's uh, put this in your calculator. Plug in 15 factorial. That is 9 factorial and then times 6 factorial. So the result will be 5,000. So 5,005. This will be 5,005. This will result to x to 0. So your final answer will be letter A. Alright, I hope you, you learned that one. Now let's have another problem with the same concept. Okay, the same concept. So we are going to find this in this case we are going to find a constant term that is the term p of x. Okay? So the, uh, recall that the constant term you know, 
of a variable raised to the power of zero. So we call it that. So what we will do here is to copy the terms, the binomial terms. This is x squared. And then this is never mind the negative. Uh, let's just write negative here. Negative of x minus two. We can remove this one since we will be uh, solving for the, the the powers first. Okay, let's solve for the power. Okay, so since we don't know the power of x squared, we can just use k. Since we also don't know the power of x uh, raised to minus two, we can have it as total power minus k and the result is x raised to zero okay. now if we will simplify uh, this equation and equate the exponent we will have 2k minus 3 times 30 minus k equals to zero okay. then we will solve for the value of k so first now we will multiply we will distribute First, distribute and then transpose. And the result will be positive 90. Then next, distribute. And then add that to 2k. The result will be 5k. So meaning to say k is equal to 90 divided by 5. So what is 90 divided by 5? 18. So if you are not sure, you can use your value. Okay, 90 divided by 5, that's 18. So we need to say k is 18. So we can write okay, the exponent or the, the expansion here. Let's say I will just use this formula. x squared raised to 18. That's the value of k. I will put it here. Over here. x squared raised to 18. Okay. Then this time we will copy the negative sign. Negative x raised to one negative. Three. So since the total the total exponent is thirty, and you have now eighteen, the remaining will be twelve. Okay. Okay. The total power is thirty factorial. Put that here. The exponent of x squared is eighteen factorial. The exponent of this term is twelve factorial. Now you have your Answer. So using factorials, we have 30 factorial, 30 factorial, we divide that with 18 factorial, we multiply that by 12 factorial. So the technique in this subject is not to memorize formulas. Okay? So this is 86, 86, 490. 2, 2, 5, 8, 6, 4, 9, 3, 2, 2, 5. Okay, take note, now this negative raised to the power of 12 will become positive. So, this will be your final answer. Easy? Yes, very easy. It will be more easier if you will not memorize any formulas in this subject. Okay. So arithmetic progression will be discussed uh, on my next video. So thank you for listening and I hope you have learned something uh, about the binomial theorem. See you and goodbye.